While others are joining, I'll just start us with an introduction. Welcome, everybody. We're excited to have you here, especially for Walking 101, because we are starting our March into May competition on March 29th. And so we thought it'd be a perfect time for Laura to come in and give us some tips for getting started with walking, maybe to make, if you already a avid, avid walker, how to um, spice it up a little bit. So as usual, I will put in the chat box a link to sign in. And if you are unable to use the chat box, just send me an email at smayslco.org and I can send you that link. But I'll turn the time over to you, Laura. Thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you. I really uh, appreciate the opportunity to be able to present uh, Walking 101 to you. And um, I'm very passionate about health promotion and disease prevention. Uh, I've been a nurse for 30 years, but I spent 15 of those years in the emergency department and didn't see a lot of uh, prevention and health promotion in that uh, environment. We saw a lot, I saw a lot more uh, disease prevention or treatment. Um, but I've come to realize, and I think that the nation's um, view and focus really is that the solution to the epidemic of obesity and chronic illness in this nation is movement and exercise. And so that's kind of what we're gonna focus in on. So here's um, my disclaimer. Um, the information we kind of talk about doesn't, um, doesn't, won't replace independent physician assessment and recommendations, and I have no conflict of interest. All right, our learning objectives, we're gonna talk about the general and health benefits of walking. We're going to discuss things you should consider um, before starting a walking program or advancing your fitness. And then we're gonna talk about some walking resources. So I love this picture. It makes me think about uh, the 70s and 80s and how physical exercise at that time was promoted. Um, when I think of this, I think of Jane Fonda. Um, it ages me a little bit, but um, really at that time, high intensity exercise was the big bad. Um, and the high intensity exercise was really promoted as reaching your heart rate to 70 to 85% of maximum, and you should exercise 60 minutes. Um, that whole adage of no pain, no gain uh, was big. And high intensity exercise really, don't get me wrong, is great and really necessary uh, for those that are athletes or training for events. Uh, but high intensity exercise is not meant for everyone. Um, there is a higher risk for injury with higher intensity uh, exercise. It's difficult to attain. And especially when you are first starting, it's very discouraging. There was, um, there was a time that I did a lot of aerobic classes in my local gymnasium or rec center. And I always felt bad for um, the people that I would co see come in and struggle to try to keep up with everyone else. And, you know, typically within a week or two, they quit because it was just so discouraging. So um, that's why I really like the direction um, that we are going. Um, and really, the reason we are where we are now is because of the research that's happened in the last 15 or 20 years. It's really changed our approach to exercise. And exercise is more, um, the promotion is for moderate exercise versus high intensity. And moderate exercise is really excellent for health in itself. Um, and there is a promotion for incorporating it into a lifestyle change as well. So a variety of moderate activities um, can be included um, in exercise, but walking really is a great example of a moderate activity and it does improve cardiovascular fitness. Um, walking really has been very well researched. Um, there was a recently a review of 18 walking studies where they took non-active participants 
and put them into a moderate intensity walking program. And the results of these, this program actually showed a uh, improved cardiovascular fitness of 10%, which doesn't sound like a, a lot, but according to scientists that actually equated to a 15% reduction in mortality. So all of these studies were actually conducted over several months. So you can kind of speculate that if those non-active participants continued with their walking program, that their cardiovascular fitness would continue to improve and that their risk uh, for mortality would continue to decrease. So these are the current recommendations by the US Department of Health and Human Services in regards to physical activity. Adults need 150 minutes or two and a half hours of moderate intensity activity spread throughout the week. There is a significant support of walking as a preferred source of activity because anyone can do it. There was a, a study by the American Heart Association that found that the benefits of walking were the same whether you got the steps in one long walk or short, a few shorter ones or even brief uh, walks of a few minutes, just as long as it's regular. So examples of this would be walking briskly 30 minutes uh, a day for five days a week, or you could break that up into 10 minute walks uh, three times a day. So a 10 minute walk in the morning, a 10 minute walk in the evening, and maybe a 10 minute walk as part of your lunch break. If you wear a tracking watch, um, if you log 10,000 steps a day, you're likely meeting these recommended activity goals. Though the Department of Health and Human Services also mentions if you're trying to lose weight and incorporating exercise for that reason, they actually um, recommend doubling this time. So it would be 300 um, minutes a week or uh, one hour, uh, five days a week. Organizations and partnerships have recognized how walking can improve overall health. And unlike higher intensity activity, it's not limited on who can participate. This collaboration has resulted in a national physical activity plan. The Everybody Walk Collaborative is sponsored by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and is supported by the U.S. Surgeon General and over 100 national, state, and local health organizations. The vision of this includes city planners and community leaders um, to ensure funding of green spaces. So I've actually seen this kind of come into motion, um, at least here locally and um, in Salt Lake as well, where you start seeing biking lanes, you see, um, you know, they've taken like here in Davis County where I live, they've taken um, the old rail trail and created a walking space. And so it's really great to see that because the evidence shows that when green spaces are available in a community, physical activity in the surrounding community actually increases. So this is a really great program. So walking versus running. Um, many times higher intensity uh, exercise participants can judge people who are walking and you know, put it in a pointless category, but don't go there because it's really not true. Um, while it is true that if you choose running as your form of exercise, it is higher intensity. So it takes a shorter period of time to accomplish the same goal, um, 20 minutes, three days a week. But just because running is more physically demanding, um, like the aerobics I spoke about earlier, doesn't necessarily mean it's for everyone. Uh, running has its drawbacks as well. And one of those is that runners are airborne during some part of every stride. So gravity makes a huge impact on a runner's legs and they have to absorb uh, about 100 tons of impact force. Because of this, there's about a 27% risk of injury for those that are runners uh, compared to walkers that have less than 5% risk of injury. So ultimately you have to kind of weigh the pros and cons um, to determine what is the best form of exercise for you. But 
Um, on the other hand, walking at any speed, your foot is on the ground at all times. So it's really preferred across all age groups and it's best for those that have joint problems, back problems, or those who are overweight or obese. So why should you walk? Uh, walking doesn't need any instruction or skill. Our bodies were actually designed to walk. Our feet has uh, 26 bones in it, 33 articulations, 111 ligaments, and 20 muscles. And so really, like I said, it's our bodies are designed and our feet are actually designed to hold our weight and walk. 54% of US women and 41% of men cite walking as their most common activity. And so really you're in good company if you're considering walking as your moderate exercise. One of the benefits is that you can walk anywhere. It doesn't matter. You can do inside or outside, city or country. You can do it when you're on vacation. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, it's a moderate activity where you're by very nature, you keep one foot on the ground at all times. So it has that low risk of injury. Walking is also very inexpensive. All you need is a really a good pair of shoes and um, walking shoes will last a long time because you're not walking super long distances versus runners who have the impact on their shoes and are running long distances. Walking can be really fun because you can explore different paths or green spaces. Um, when I walk, I pay more attention to my environment and, um, you know, I see what my neighbors are doing to their houses and I see down the road. Um, and you typically when you drive, you don't see the scenery that you see when you walk. And so um, it's very soothing to me going on a walk and also kind of fun to see and explore your environment. Walking can provide solitude, um, but it can also provide social possibilities. So if you wanna walk by yourself, um, it's very good for your mental health. Um, but if you like, um, you can also walk in a walking group. And the research has actually shown that walking in a walking group actually um, acts as a lifeline for many people. It, it um, improves their social, emotional, and physical health and well-being. And this is especially true during periods of uh, events big events in people's lives. All right, now we're gonna talk about health benefits. It's estimated that um, more than half of your body's muscle mass is engaged while walking. Uh, the energy demand from your muscles increase the oxygen demand, and that is believed to be the trigger that causes the physiological changes that benefit health. So the body works better and heals faster. It reduces general cancer risk by 20%, prostate uh, risk by 46%, breast and colon cancer by 31%, reduces the risk of breast cancer reoccurrence by 50%, um, reduces stroke and blood clot risk by 50%, risk of diabetes diagnosis between 50 and 70%, depending on your age. And those who are already diagnosed with diabetes actually improves the stability of blood sugar control. It improves your balance and coordination, your fitness and endurance, your posture and quality of life. And that's not all. There's been, it's been very well researched. Um, walking increases your metabolism and burns an average of about 100 calories a mile. And even though that doesn't sound like a lot, with consistency, those calories add up to a better weight control. There was a, a, a long study, a 15-year study that was done of nearly 5,000 men and women. And the study actually indicated that the average American gains 2.2 pounds a year after middle age. 
So over the 15 years of the study, uh, the average walker uh, gained 18 pounds less than non-walkers, which was significant finding. Um, another study found that participants who increased their step by 3,000 steps per day lost an average of five pounds a year. Walking has also sh been shown to reduce BMI, which is a calculation uh, using weight and height. And there was another study that indicated that people who walk actually consume half the amount of sugar than people that do not walk. So it curbs your cravings. Ultimately, weight loss is really affected by varying factors, but like how fast you walk or distance or consistency, but the research is very clear that it improves uh, weight management. Walking also increases energy. It makes us feel energized and less fatigued. Recent studies indicated that walking outside or walking up or down st stairs for even just 10 minutes was more energizing than a cup of coffee. This, phenom this, um, this phenomenon is really because it releases cortisol, epinephrine, and norepi, um, and these hormones naturally elevate your energy level. Um, and another reason is the walking increases blood flow and subsequent oxygen and nutrients, which fuels the muscles and the brain. Walking regularly can also protect you from becoming ill. The evidence shows that exercise like walking will increase your white blood cell count within five minutes of starting your exercise. And the roles white blood cells uh, do in your body is that it fights infection and disease. So not only do white blood cells um, decrease the risk of becoming ill, and it actually decreases it by 43%, but those who walk um, 30 to 45 minutes a day that did become sick, their symptoms were less severe and they recovered qu uh, more quickly. So also walking is a perfect example um, to allow for free flow of ideas. Um, it allows your mind to wander. It helps with creative and aha moments. Um, so if you're at work and having difficulty, um, consider a walking meeting uh, because that's when your aha moments will occur and your creative thinking are in its maximum. Walking improves uh, our focus and attention. It helps us multitask um, and it reduces the, uh, the brain's deterioration as we age. In fact, there's a 50% reduction in dementia and Alzheimer's disease uh, for people who walk just two miles um, a week. I mentioned earlier, exercise can um, help your mental health, um, but it reduces stresses. It reduces stress and fights depression as well. It can improve your self-esteem, your self-confidence, and reduce social withdrawal. Uh, studies show that the more steps people take each day, the better their moods are. A 10-minute walk will relieve anxiety and boost your mood. A 12-minute walk increases your vigor and self-confidence and a 30 minute walk eases major depressive disorder. Um, and walking in nature has actually been found to decrease remuneration over negative experiences and trauma. So it decreases um, post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms. Heart disease is the leading cause of death in the US for both men and women. The effect walking has on the cardiovascular system exceeds the, the loss of 20 pounds. And so really walking brings up your heart rate and strengthens, strengthens your heart. It reduces um, high cholesterol by 7%. Um, it makes your vessels happier and more supple and your blood pressure will go down five points after tw um, 20 minutes of walking. 
It reduces your cardio, cardiovascular artery disease and cardiovascular disease um, upwards of 40%. And if you do have a cardiovascular event like a heart attack, um, it cuts the risk of dying from that um, by 32%. These benefits were equal in both men and women and really cardiac, uh, cardiac protection starts at a distance of one mile five days a week. Um, walking also extends your life expectancy. Uh, genetics really pay, play into a big part of who we are and what health problems we ultimately deal with. But according to scientists, our lifestyle, um, particular exercise can help overcome the genetic component. There was a 20 year study that was completed between 1975 and 1995. And the study actually um, included 16,000 same sex twins to determine how much genetics play into life expectancy. So a twin who exercised regularly were 56% less likely to die than their sedentary sibling. Um, a twin who exercised occasionally had a 34% lower death rate than their sedentary uh, sibling. So really the longer and faster you walk, the more it increases your life expectancy. And it's never too late because people who um, exercise after middle age are up to 45% less likely to die over the next eight years. All right, the last one is that walking eases pain and disability. Um, your bones and muscles, specifically your legs, arms, and abdominal muscles uh, benefit. Your joints also benefit. It's, um, it's kind of a, a walking massage to your cartilage. For these reasons, walking is actually recommended for chronic pain conditions like osteoporosis and arthritis. Um, it also releases endorphins, which is that happy hormone I spoke about earlier. It's actually a, a natural pain reliever as well. So how do you begin? So you prepare for walking by assuring that you have the correct shoes. Um, they should be supportive enough with enough room for your toes. Um, the upper should be light and breathable. The insole should be moisture resistant uh, with a flexible sole and really look for something that says it's specific for walking. Many of the athletic brands will have walking specific shoes. Clothes should, you should be, wear comfortable and appropriate for weather. Um, use a hot uh, a hat or visor when it's hot um, and during colder temperatures, I actually recommend a warm hat, layering your clothing and using earmuffs to kind of protect your ears from being cold. You don't wanna be miserable when you're out walking. Safety is a really big factor when it comes to walking, especially if you're walking on streets that doesn't have a pedestrian lane or a sidewalk. One of the most important things to consider when you are walking is you need to face the cars. So if you need to be going against traffic. The reason for that is if you are walking with the flow of traffic, you can't see the drivers behind you and you have no time to react. If you're walking and you can see the driver and see that the car is drifting towards you, you have time um, to react. And so that's why um, that's an important thing to consider. Um, it is important to note though, that the more pedestrians there are, the easier motorists can see you. So um, that could be a consideration in walking in a group versus walking alone. You should be aware of your surroundings. Um, if you wear headphones when you walk, um, keep the volume low enough or use one earphone so that you can hear car horns or people's voices or barking. Um, don't walk with your phone. It might be tempting to use your phone and check your texts or your emails, um, but that's a good way to get hurt. Um, I've seen many videos of people walking into poles while they are walking using their cell phone or falling into manholes. 
Um, so it's just not a good idea. And besides the fact that you're using this as an exercise and, an, and a way to clear your mind. So let it, let it clear your mind. If there's green space parks or walking trails nearby, um, that's really the safest option. Um, make sure that you wear reflective clothing if it is dark, like if you're walking early in the morning or later in the evening. And um, I actually share my location like with my family. I use an app on my phone called Life360. So I do take my phone and kind of tuck it in my pocket and they know exactly where I am at all times. Um, if the weather isn't appropriate, then consider walking in a shopping mall or a, a local recreational center. Um, and that's always a great idea anyway, because you sometimes need a plan B if you're going to use a, if you're going to incorporate a walking plan or a program. So you've totally got this. Remember at any speed, you are actually lapping anyone who's just sitting and thinking about exercising. Um, so think about your goals, how far and how often you're going to walk, um, where and um, with whom, where you wanna be in one month or six months or a year and set realistic goals first, like start walking 10 to 15 minutes, three times a week. and have a plan to reach your goals and escalate them as you go. I actually, um, one of the things that I do that really works for me is that I actually calendar my exercise as a daily task. So I will, you know, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'll put in, you know, walking. Um, and then, you know, I'm, I'm swim on Saturday or what have you. Um, just as long as you know, and I live by my calendar, and so that really works for me. So you could cer cer certainly consider that. Um, also, to put that into action, um, plan where you're going to walk, the days and times, like I mentioned, and if you're going to have a companion. So factors you should consider before walking. Um, most people don't need to see a doctor before they start a walking program because, we're, again, we're made to walk. However, you should check with your doctor if you have a chronic health problem like heart condition, diabetes, or high blood pressure, or if you are very inactive and over 40 years old. If you're walking and you develop uh, dizziness or fainting, shortness of breath, or any kind of pain in your neck, shoulder, or chest, you should also see your physician. Treadmill walking can be different than walking outside, and there's some important things you should remember. One of the common um, mistakes people make on the treadmill is they set the pace um, so high that it requires them to hold on or to support the, the weight of their body with their arms. When you do this, this actually takes away from the muscle engagement and energy and doesn't give you the full benefit. So um, another thing that you can do um, with the treadmill to get the most out of it is to have a preset program, use the preset programs to do what's called interval training. Um, that's where the, the incline or pace will increase um, and then decrease and then increase and then decrease. So it's kind of gives you this interval um, training. If you don't have the preset programs, you can certainly do that yourself. Another tip for treadmill walking is, is to create a playlist that you're listening to music and when you have an upbeat song, you walk faster or and then maybe you have a slower song and you'll um, slow down your pace. So that provides kind of that same interval training. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is Nordic walking. And really this engages um, more muscles and boosts the intensity. And so it's similar to like cross-country skiing. 
and your poles kind of are behind, behind the body. Now this is different than like walking with a hiking pole where it helps with your balance and stability. Um, but if you're interested, there's lots of information um, and I'll talk about some of the resources um, later, um, but it does benefit because you're using more muscles. So it makes you more feel, um, it engages more muscles and burns more calories. Um, it also overcomes that stress in your neck and shoulders for people that do a lot of desk work and it does improve upper body strength and is similar to like strength training. Okay, we've talked a lot about that. What are we going to do and how are we going to do it? So it's always a great idea to warm up your muscles before going on a brisk walk. To warm up, you would take the first five minutes of your walk and walk at a slower, steady pace. And then you increase your pace uh, to a brisk walk. And a brisk walk really is walking fast enough to raise your heart rate and your um, respiration rate, um, but you can still speak and breathe easily. Your goal is to turn a normal walk into a fitness stride, and it really requires good posture. So keeping your head up and your body relaxed, um, swinging your arms with your elbows bent, um, keeping your stomach muscles tight and your back straight. And it's best to actually, you can improve your speed rolling from heel to toe. So you can kind of practice that um, as well. At the end of your walk, walk slowly for five minutes to help your muscles cool down. Um, it's a great idea to stretch after you walk to help with muscle soreness and improve flexibility. These five stretches are a great choice. Um, if you need to, you can actually use a wall or chair for balance for several of them. But to stretch correctly, you reach, um, hold the stretch for 10 to 30 seconds um, while breathing deeply and then repeat on the other side. You shouldn't ever bounce or hold your breath and you should do each stretch slowly and reach only as far as you're comfortable. This actually will help you so it's not, uh, so that you don't have soreness. Starting a, a walking program takes initiative and sticking with it takes commitment. Make sure that you set yourself up for success. Start with a simple goal, like I mentioned, and once it, that becomes a habit, then you can set a new goal. For example, you, your goal could be, I'm going to walk 10 minutes, five days a week. Once that has become a habit in three or four weeks, then you can increase that to 15 minutes or 20 minutes. So start simple. Um, make your walking um, enjoyable. You can do it with a friend, um, you can join a group, um, or you can listen to music um, while you walk. Um, be overcoming barriers. Um, get rid of your all or nothing mindset. A lot of times people will be really good for a week or two and then they miss a day and they say, throw up their hands, it's not worth it. Okay, I can't do it. Um, even if you miss a day, forgive yourself and start again. Um, there, there is no all or nothing. Another thing is having a plan B. So um, weather gets me all the time. I love walking outside, taking my dog for a walk. Um, but many times, suddenly it's snowing outside. So um, know where you can go to um, be able to walk, whether that's indoors on a treadmill or at a uh, local rec center or at a local mall. And then the other thing is um, varying your route. Um, I like to explore and look for different places um, to be able to walk. And um, we'll talk more about the different resources that you can have in regards to that as well. Um, keeping a record of how many steps you take, the distance you walk and how long can serve as a great motivator. Uh, just, I use, um, I use a Fitbit and so I track my steps and my exercise and I get a report uh, every week of my progress. 
which is um, really astonishing to look at the numbers and it really gives you a, a feel good feeling. Um, and so I highly recommend that. Another thing that you can do is reward yourself. Um, so if you complete your 30 minute walk for the particular day or you complete your goal for the day, uh, give yourself, uh, you know, a relaxing shower or give yourself 30 minutes um, reading a book. Just anything that's going to feel like a reward to you um, will help you stick with a plan. Make walking part of your daily life. And I mentioned that study earlier from the American Heart Association um, that says even small minutes of walking is the same as putting it all together. And so things like walking to the, to the local grocery store, if you're getting just a couple things rather than driving or park in spots that are further away from, your, from the store um, instead of driving around trying to find the closest spot taking the stairs rather than the elevator, um, taking a break at work and taking a 10 minute um, walk. Or if you're traveling, um, stroll around the airport um, rather than sitting. All right, we're gonna talk about some walking plans. This is a sedentary walking plan, which means that if you're not active at all, as I mentioned earlier, you need to start out slow. So this is kind of a sample of that, slowly increasing the time each week. So the first week, um, you're going to walk maybe 15 minutes, five days a week. And the considerations is that you should kind of take an easy pa pace and shin splints are possible, especially if you've never um, walked. And so Stretching after your walk would be really important to kind of minimize that. Um, if any of the weeks are difficult, you should repeat that week rather than adding more time. And if you can't do a full walk, any amount of walking is better than no walking. If you're already active or once you can walk 30 minutes at a time comfortably, you can kind of continue your progress. As walking gets easier, start by working on your walking speed. If you use correct arm motion and roll from heel to toe um, through your step, it can actually help you in increase your pace. And then you can also start going longer distances or longer time frames. You should never increase more than 10% on one day um, than your maximum the prior week. The last way to challenge yourself is to vary the intensity by doing intervals, similar to what I talked about earlier with the treadmill. Um, intervals will alternate between moderate intensity and higher intensity. So doing like 30 second to one minute of higher intensity and then followed by a minute or two of the slower paced recovery. So hill walking is kind of a type of interval training. When you walk up a steep hill, it actually, um, burns more calories and improves your cardiovascular fitness. So you could alternate walking on a level surface and then walk up a hill. Another way is stairs. Um, so hitting a flight of stairs um, can increase your fitness level. And really you should take the stairs whenever you can. Um, when I'm at St. Mark's, there's, um, five flights of stairs, and my goal is always to take the stairs unless I have a rolling cart that I have to take somewhere. Um, and so one of the ways in regards to outdoor walking, if you walk part way to a destination that has some stairs, say a local high school that has, um, you know, the, the stairs there, then you can do some stairs and then walk back home. You can advance your walking routine by taking a more challenging walk um, or explore a path you've never been. Um, getaways don't have to involve just sitting on a beach or on the deck of a cruise ship. You can add walking to your um, vacations. Um, 
And you can also take a walking trek. You can walk in Yosemite in California, um, the Long Trail in Vermont, um, uh, walk across England or Ireland or any other long distance walking paths. Many events accommodate walkers right along with runners. So you can sign up for a 5K walk, um, which is 3.1 miles and will take you about 45 to 60 minutes. You can do a 10K walk, um, which is 6.2 miles um, and will take you um, 90 uh, minutes to 120 minutes. All right, we're going to go over some resources. So um, several websites I'm going to refer you to. The walking site has information on how to start a walking program and has various schedules um, and actually has some marathon walking advice if you want to advance to those higher events. Um, 99 Walks is actually a community of women. They have an app that is involved um, monthly rewards, a uh, supportive community, and walking challenges. Active.com is a website that has a list of all the walking events around the country, and you can certainly sign up for an event down the road, and then that helps keep your motivation up as well if you know that this event is coming up. In regards to apps, um, walking for Weight Loss is um, a walking fitness plan that will help kind of guide you no matter your current level of fitness. And I definitely recommend that app. Walk with my map, uh, map my walk. This is kind of what I mentioned earlier. Um, it shows you a map of the area that you're in and will help you um, determine where you wanna walk. It'll give you distance, um, time, elevation, calories, um, and it connects to fitness wearables and allows you to also connect to other fitness walk walkers in your area. And then there is an Apple app. Um, it's called Time to Walk um, through Apple Fitness. And it actually was just released. It provides audio walking um, experiences. And it actually, you walk alongside um, influential and interesting people um, and they kind of share their thoughts and stories as you're walking together so it's kind of a, a program in regards to that. So here's my references and I want you to take just a minute and I want you to think of two things that you learned and what is one thing that you want to start uh, to change or start doing. And then I will take any questions that anyone has. Thank you, Laura. And while we're waiting for those in the chat box, um, I think so with our March into May competition, we have a lot of people who go from zero to 100, right? Because we have them on teams and people are really increasing their step count for the day. And we wanna help them prevent those shin splints or any other injuries. So beyond warming up and stretching, what are some other things people can do so that they can keep themselves fresh? Yeah, I think that that warming up and stretching is key for those shin splints or any kind of muscle soreness. And I mentioned not increasing more than 10% a day um, because then you you also risk your your you also risk injury. Um, so you want to be gung ho, and I understand that they want to be gung ho, and it's a competition and everything, um, but they're not going to be able to compete if they're hurt. Um, so you'll have to kind of take, take that into consideration, but definitely the stretching and warming up for that first five minutes and then cooling down at that last five minutes of your walk. Yes. And making it maybe more of a competition against yourself. You don't need to be at your goal steps that first week, but since it is a six week competition, trying to work up 
more, like you said, maybe 10% each day or each week, a little bit more so that it's not something that's going to cause problems later. Cause we want it to make people healthy, not for it to diminish their health right off the bat. So yeah. thank and you. If, and if it starts like at a certain point, you know, if, if it starts in like a week and a half, they can start right now and start working up, especially if they're inactive um, so that, that they're raring to go when it starts. Oh, that is great advice. Thank you. We have a couple of questions. Um, we have, do you know if there are any advantages or disadvantages to riding a stationary bike versus walking? Um, stationary bike is another great because it's very easy on the joints. Um, but walking actually uh, burns a little bit more calories. Again, it kind of varies depending on how fast you're pedaling versus walking. Um, they're pretty similar in their benefits, but definitely there's been more research in the walking. Um, but a lot of times those that have like joint injuries, um, they'll say to do the biking instead because you're not putting weight on your, on those joints at all. Um, it's a less weight bearing activity. So I'm not saying that riding, I actually ride and I enjoy biking, um, both outside and inside. Um, and so I'm kind of a variety. I like to do a variety of activities so I don't get bored. Um, so that is a great one um, as well. Um, I'd have to look at, you know, the calorie count versus one versus the other. So I can't directly answer that, but they're pretty close. I think the big difference is that you're not putting any weight. There is no weight bearing. And so it's probably the best for those that have joint issues, especially like knees. Mm -hmm. And our next question is, I walk five to seven miles per day and have done so for years, but lately my right foot goes numb walking up a hill. Any suggestions? Well, um, that is interesting. I, I would question about your shoes. Um, and I, I, I'm not sure why that would happen. Honestly, it could be a nerve issue. Um, like you're pinching a nerve. That's typically where numbness comes, but there has been times like where I have had a pair of shoes that were getting worn down and I replaced my shoes and all of my problems kind of resolved. So I'd say replace your shoes if you haven't done that recently. And if not, I would probably follow up with your physician because it could be a nerve impingement issue. And the next one is, can you address walking with weights? So walking with weights um, can increase your intensity, especially if you walk often. Um, I actually don't recommend walking with weights necessarily because that increases your risk of um, injury um, if you're doing it incorrectly. Like if you've got them on your, in your hands and you're swinging your arms, it, that added weight can um, lead to injury. Um, so can you do that? Yes, many people do. Um, and so it kind of helps with that um, adding the strength training to your um, aerobic activity. But personally, I've seen injuries from that. And so I'm not a huge advocate unless you are extremely, uh, your, your um, walking stance is extremely um, well done and you are very familiar with it. Um, but I would start out very, very low. If you are going to use weights, start with one pound, two pound weights, um, and then increase. Don't go to five pounds um, quickly. You want to start out slow. And if you start having pain when you're doing that, then you need to discontinue that. All right, and our next one is, I love walking outside, but my four-year-old isn't always on board. Any suggestions on how to encourage my walking buddy? 
Um, yes, that's one of those barriers you have to get over. And so um, when I had young toddlers and I wanted to get out, I ended up getting a, a pushing, um, you know, like one of those little scooter pushing um, ones. And they love that. Like my, I had three-year-old twins at the time and they did, they weren't about that, but they really liked going for a ride in their little cubby. And so um, you have to be um, creative um, to do that. Um, that's probably the best is to get something that you can do, but they still are enjoying um, as well. Yeah, and if we have other suggestions too, we can put those in the chat box. Um, the next question is walking eases back pain, but does it actually strengthen back muscles? Um, walking doesn't necessarily do the back. It's more the abs that it will improve and the muscles of your legs. Um, but it does improve the pain. Um, and any movement with your back pain typically will can be really easily resolved by having any kind of exercise, especially walking, can relieve that back pain. Um, but it really doesn't strengthen the back muscles per se. You actually have to really do some strength training specifically to strengthen those muscles because the motion of walking just doesn't um, affect those particular muscles. Thank you. And our next question is, um, is at home walk aerobics as effective as walking around the neighborhood? Um, so, there's different benefits. When you walk around the neighborhood, I mentioned it can kind of improve your mental health. So it kind of depends on what your goals are. Um, you can, you know, doing it at home can be just as effective physically as doing it around the neighborhood. Um, but you lose kind of maybe the mental health benefit of that. Um, but that's probably the the only thing that you would lose is that mental health, clearing of the mind, seeing, being out in nature. Um, but other than that, physically, it would, should be the same. Thank you. It looks like that's all the questions I have in the chat box. Does anyone want to unmute themselves with a question? All righty. Well, thank you so much. This is a perfect introduction for our step challenge that's coming up so that people can be prepared and also um, know to get that variety of steps. Maybe not just concentrate on walking every day, but the majority of your week and then doing, like you mentioned, maybe the stationary bike on a different day or um, even doing stretches or something like that so that we can stay strong. But thank you, everybody. If you didn't sign in, um, please do so. I put the chat or put the link in the chat box for you. Thanks, Laura. That was really great. Thank you. Oh, I like in the chat how someone said doing a scavenger hunt for the four-year-old. I like that. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. Today we are looking for a pine cone funny shaped cloud and a rubber band. <laughs> Love it. It's just with a four-year-old or younger, you, you can't really keep your pace up. That's the only problem. <laughs> but you are encouraging them to be physically active. So there's oh, yeah. that. <laughs> Or how do you bad? Oh, go ahead, Holly. How do you get information on the Nordic walking? I haven't heard about that before. Um, so the walking site um, that I provided the resource, the website that has some information on the Nordic walking. 
Um, I just would caution if you like do a Google search um, that you make sure it's a reputable website, that it's an ORG or a GOV um, or an EDU or something like that website um, versus um, any any uh, Joe Blow website that someone, someone created. Um, but yeah, the walking site that I had, let me see if I've got Let's see. Yeah, the walking site. So do a Google search, the walking site, and that's got <clears throat> lots of resources, including information on, on Nordic walking. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and great job. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Have you heard anything related to well like reasons to not work if walk in a shopping mall because I mentioned it to a friend once and she said oh no you know you're breathing other people's germs etc um I have never heard anything negative about walking or walking uh in a shopping center in fact I actually just saw a um kind of a news program that talked about a place in the Midwest that they've got um, um, people over the age of 65 that is that have been walking in this particular shopping mall for the last 20 years and that the amount of people that are joining this group is just astounding. And I mean, ultimately, could you be sharing germs with people that, you know, versus walking outside where you have more fresh air. Yeah, you know, especially in this day and age where we're fighting the whole COVID thing. Um, but if you're gonna wear, a, I would probably, if you're gonna do a shopping center, I would wear a mask just like you would any other place. And it's not going to reduce your benefits at all. Um, would it increase your risk of, you know, getting a, COVID or some other respiratory illness, if you were in close proximity with people in an area that doesn't have as good of an air circulation system. Yeah, but that would be about the only other, that would be the only issue. Thank you and I enjoyed your presentation. Thank you. Okay, since we don't have any other comments, Laura, I am going to end the meeting. I hope to see you soon.